Hey there guys, we're taking a look at a comparison of the Ryzen 5 5600U and the i5 1135G7. Now these are two different generations of CPUs, but you're starting to see a lot of 1135G7 systems hit the market at relatively low prices around the $400 range, while the 5600U is around $500 starting to $600. And here we're going to see what a $200 difference can get you here. And first of all, we're testing out 10 different games, starting off with a heavy hitter here with Horizon Zero Dawn. Now we're starting off easy at 720p with FSR set to performance mode. So we're pretty much running at half of 720p right now. And the Ryzen 5 is able to actually handle this pretty well we're able to get some actual playable frame rates here while the i5 is really struggling here and if you really pay attention you'll see that the gpu on the i5 is actually not even being fully utilized here. and the reason being is that we are completely cpu bottlenecked here this poor four core eight thread cpu is just being completely maxed out here and it's really actually holding back the integrated graphics here we could actually net some more performance here if the cpu was not the limiting factor here and it's an interesting situation because that means that Alder Lake, even though it's not upgrading the GPU, is at least going to give us a CPU uplift here that might actually make this game a lot more playable on here. And in fact, if you guys want me to get a Alder Lake i5 to compare to this 1135G7, then here's what we'll do. We're almost at a thousand subscribers. So if we can get to a thousand subscribers within the next week and this video gets 200 likes, I will get a system with the i i5 1235u which is rocking the exact same igpu but with more cpu cores so if you want to see that comparison remember we got to get to a thousand subscribers and 200 likes on this video within the next week but really as you can see here we are just completely cpu bottlenecked here even at 720p so by raising the resolution up to 1080p we actually alleviate some of the load on the cpu and put it onto the igpu but you'll see it won't make that much of a difference now at 1080p, both systems at their stock 15 watt TDP really start to struggle here, but the Ryzen 5 is just able to keep a far more consistent frame rate and overall it's a at least playable experience, which is not something you can say about the i5. In fact, it got so bad that the, the two benchmarks actually got desynced. So like the i5 was just running super far behind. If you look at the frame times on it, I mean, it's just, it's literally unplayable. That's not a playable experience in the slightest. But the i5 is really just falling apart here. And you'll see the GPU utilization is higher than it was at 720p, but the CPU is still just maxed out at 100%, which means it's still the bottleneck here. And really that's just something that won't ever really be alleviated until you replace the system with something with more cores. So really the four core 8 thread limitation of Tiger Lake is going to make the systems age very very quickly especially compared to Alder Lake. So at least in Horizon Zero Dawn the Ryzen 5 is just completely playable even in its worst case scenarios which is this it's still a playable experience. Meanwhile the i5 was struggling on both and it's just really dying just trying to do this at 1080p. Now not every AAA game is going to fully peg the CPU although here you can see that the i5 is seeing some pretty high CPU utilization pretty much every core and thread is being hit but they're not being maxed out completely and you'll see that the gpu is actually putting in some work here it's being properly utilized with that said at 1080p it's really just the ryzen 5 that's able to produce what i would call a playable frame rate though both aren't exactly going to be an incredible experience and this is at 1080p with the lowest in-game graphics settings and unfortunately the 720p footage of the ryzen 5 is corrupted so i can't really show you the comparison but the ryzen 5 pretty much ended up performing better and really while actually playing the game one of the biggest differences was just the fact that the i5 would have some very inconsistent load times and moments of severe stutter where already the frame times are just brutal on it as you can see right here but trying to actually play the game like this was pretty much impossible so it definitely seems like the i5 really struggles with triple a type titles specifically because of the fact that the gpu just isn't as powerful as the ryzen 5 5, and those CPU cores are just really struggling in terms of being able to feed enough to these more demanding games.
Now moving on to another AAA title, we're taking a look at Borderlands 3 running at 720p with the lowest in-game graphics settings, which is the very low preset. Here you can see that the Ryzen 5 is producing a much better gaming experience, though at least the i5 is at least within playable FPS range here, though those 1% lows are a little brutal. Really, when you're actually playing the game, it's not necessarily too bad, and it's a consistent enough experience that you can get away with playing like this, but it's not the most ideal frame rate to be getting at 720p. But really, overall, you'll see that the CPU usage is actually very low on the i5, so this is a full limitation of just the GPU. The CPU itself is not actually holding us back here, and it really does show the big deficit that there is between the performance of the 80 EU Iris XC and the Radeon 7. But let's look at 1080p to really show the comparison of that. As you see here at 1080p, it is two completely different experiences. The Ryzen 5, while not an ideal frame rate, is at least more consistent here, though I would question calling it playable. I mean, you can get away with playing like this. Let's be real. There's people that would play this game like how it's running on the i5 right now, let alone how it's running on the Ryzen 5. But it's definitely showing that there is a huge level of performance here where at least one of them is for the most part usable while the other one is bordering on just being an advanced powerpoint more than an actual gaming experience and it's really unfortunate that they decided to pair these tiger lake cpus with just four core eight threads and just these weaker igpus i wish for alder lake they would have just made the 96 eu version across the board just so they had something that can actually compete against the ryzen 5 because here it just really cannot keep up at all it is just constantly stuttering it's just really struggling to even produce anything let alone a playable experience now if we jump in and take a look at an, an esports title that i think is a little bit more representative of what people would really play on a more budget system we have rainbow six siege here both of them running on the vulcan api at the lowest in-game graphics settings and here you could see that while the ryzen 5 is producing an overall better experience the i5 is at least able to give something that is consistent enough that you can get away with playing this game though being a competitive first person shooter it might not be the most ideal frame rate i think a lot of people can really just get away with playing like this especially if you're just into playing terrorist hunt with your friends you can just do that perfectly fine here but this is really one of those titles that shows that the i5 is at least capable of doing something though not at the most ideal settings though dropping things down to 720p can produce better results on both systems here and we'll take a look at that right now and really this demonstrates a pretty huge difference here because on the ryzen 5 we're now getting a high refresh rate gaming experience while the i5 is really just giving us more of a overall better experience than what we were getting at 1080p it's not exactly going to be incredible but it's far more than playable especially on the fact that both of these monitors on these laptops have just a 60 hertz refresh rate so neither is really going to let you do anything outside of what the laptop itself actually has unless you're you know connecting to an external monitor which on the ryzen 5 at least there is an option there for you to do that if you want that high refresh rate experience though I kind of question how good it would be to play at 720p on a 24 inch 1080p display but both systems are pretty much just playable with this game here and I'm happy with that though all of that is immediately ruined by the fact that while testing Forza Horizon 5 the i5 was really struggling to produce even a 30 fps average here without dipping down into less than 20 fps range now to be sure the Ryzen 5 is not exactly producing the greatest experience here those one percent lows do dip down a bit here but if you look at those frame times they're far more consistent this is forza horizon 5 at 720p not using any cas upscaling or anything like that it's all pretty much just running at the default render resolution and the performance that we're getting here is drastically different though the i5 isn't unplayable it's not exactly going to be the greatest experience but you can definitely get away with playing the game like this especially if you don't take it that seriously and you're mostly just doing it for fun but of course 1080p comes in to really separate the boys from the men as you can see here both of them are struggling a bit here though the performance difference between the two isn't that far off from each other really the i5 is trying to do its best to keep a 30 fps average but those one percent lows are really taking a beating meanwhile the ryzen 5 is keeping consistently above that though it's really struggling to go above 40. the one percent lows of 21 aren't exactly the best but it is almost 
almost double what the i5 is getting in terms of 1% low. So both really aren't the most ideal for 1080p, though I would really say that one of them is really far more playable than the other. The Ryzen 5 is providing a decent enough experience here, while the i5 really mostly just dances at the border of playability. But really, it seems like the Ryzen 5 is keeping a consistent lead on any newer titles, which is to be expected. I would be more surprised if the i5 ever beat the Ryzen 5 here in any game whatsoever, just because we know it is just in general a weaker iGPU and the CPU limitations are pretty noticeable. Though at least this isn't a game that is fully utilizing the CPU and just bringing this to its knees. Really on the i5, the main thing that's suffering is that GPU. It is being fully utilized, which is really what you want to see. Now moving on to a bit older of a triple A game with the Division 2. We have it running here at 720p with the lowest in-game graphics settings for both. By the way, I have to point out that you cannot compare the RAM usage between the two systems because of the fact that they're pretty much set to calculate it completely differently. So it was just a misconfiguration on my part that will not be around for the, any other videos that I do like this. But you can see that in terms of the FPS that we're getting here, it is a drastic difference where the Ryzen 5 is able to provide a much more consistent playing experience here that is almost at a 60 fps average meanwhile the ryzen 5 is barely keeping a above 30 fps average with one percent lows that are dipping down into half of that and if you just look at those frame times you'll see they are a lot more all over the place compared to the ryzen 5 which is just keeping a consistent frame time experience for the most part with the occasional spikes that are in the couple of milliseconds more than anything else compared to the ryzen 5 which is fluctuating pretty decently in terms of the frame time and this is at 720p which is the ideal resolution for both of these chips here and you can see that the i5 is just not able to keep up and we're seeing some pretty high cpu utilization there where it's pretty much touching every single core and really you'll see that 1080p in this game is what brings the i5 to its knees it's just crawling at this point it's struggling to keep a mid-20s fps average to be sure though the ryzen 5 isn't exactly the most ideal experience here though it is more more playable i don't think that most people would really find this to be an ideal playing scenario especially if you just drop things down to 720p you can already net a pretty huge performance uplift so there's really no reason to play 1080p in either one of these systems though again one of them is just significantly more playable while the other one is a powerpoint on steroids i mean it's even struggling to keep a cinematic 24 fps average so definitely not an ideal situation for the i5 here but now we could take a look at a pretty old title at this point that is pretty much at this point 10 years old. We're looking at GTA 5. Now, I'm not using the built-in benchmark because I actually really dislike the benchmark. I don't think it does a good job of representing anything about the game. So I decided to just do around the exact same driving pattern here just in the regular campaign. And you'll see that overall the experience is not as drastically different as you would have expected, but there is definitely a noticeable drop in FPS going in the i5 though it's at least able to keep a consistent enough one percent low compared to the average that the experience was more enjoyable than anything else and this is running at 1080p here because the game itself is ancient enough that i think that both of these systems should be able to at least play this at 1080p though the i5 is kind of struggling here so you could drop things down to 900p or down to 720p if you really need to and i would honestly recommend that on the i5 while on the ryzen 5 you can get away with playing like this so again as as things get more hectic it's gonna get rough so maybe 900p is about the way to go there as well and now we're starting to enter the weird territory of games that were kind of providing issues mostly on the i5 that really kind of exemplify the difference between going with an intel or an amd chip here and really it's just because unlike before the i5 is actually able to run the benchmark here it's actually able to play the game perfectly fine which is more than what it could do before where it would just give the worst artifacting i've ever seen but in the loading screens it still shows artifacting the loading screen essentially has this pattern on it that had me thinking that the laptop itself was dying but every other game did not have any artifacting issues it was literally just this game just on the i5 so it wasn't detrimental to the gaming experience at all you could like jump into the campaign or do the benchmark and it would do it perfectly fine you wouldn't see any of that but it was there both provide a decent enough experience here but it's 1080p that really starts to show 
kind of the failure here of the i5 compared to the Ryzen 5, though the Ryzen 5 isn't exactly the greatest experience either. It's at least more playable, but those 1% lows are dipping down pretty low here. So both systems, I would say, are not really capable of playing this game at 1080p as compared to 720p, where I felt like both were perfectly fine. And this is with FSR set to performance mode. So at 720p, we were already dropping down pretty low in terms of render resolution here. We're pretty much at half of 1080p and it's still not able to provide a good experience in either chip but of course this is with the baseline resolution of 1080p but dropping things down to 720p and then also using fsr on performance mode on that is really dropping the resolution down and it's not exactly a pretty sight so i would say that this game is really not playable on either now this next one is a little bit of a weird one because we're looking at world war z aftermath running on both of these but they're not running the same the reason being is that for some reason this game has had this issue for a very long time now where on intel systems you cannot set it to vulcan api you are stuck with direct x 11 what that means is that you are locked out of fsr and you're locked out of the better performance that comes from vulcan and this really exemplifies the difference and the reason i'm showing you this is because this is the issues that you run into with intel that are just not present with amd and it's an interesting situation where amd is the one that actually has the more decent drivers because most most of the time it's just you run into driver issues because you're on AMD as compared to Nvidia. And it's not to say that Nvidia doesn't have those kinds of issues and we're looking at the game now at 1080p for comparison's sake here and you'll see again the huge difference that ends up happening here because of the fact that we can't set anything if for Vulkan and Vulkan already locks us out of FSR and really the level of performance that we could probably get out of this i5 would be significantly higher if we could just take off that overhead of DirectX 11. And again, these are issues that are just more consistent with Intel iGPUs. I really have not run into anything even remotely like this with an AMD iGPU. So really all around, this was a disappointing situation that I keep exemplifying just because I really wish they would fix this. This is just such an easy problem to fix, but they just have not gotten around to doing it. Really unfortunate. And last but not least, we're taking a look at one of Valve's only children that it actually still loves. We're taking a look at CSGO running on both of these this is running at 1080p with pretty much all of the lowest in-game graphics settings and both are decent enough except for the fact that the one percent lows are pretty brutal on the i5 overall though the gaming experience is passable enough but the ryzen 5 is definitely providing an overall better experience though it's one percent lows are still dipping below 60. really though if you hook up the i5 to an external monitor you're going to run into just some issues because of those one percent lows in comparison to the ryzen 5 which can actually do some pretty decent and high refresh rate gaming. So really overall, after testing all of these games, it really shows that the i5, the iGPU in it just is not that powerful. And the CPU is really a limiting factor here. And I'm very curious to see what Alder Lake would actually provide in terms of performance here. So again, if you want to see a comparison with an Alder Lake i5, gotta get to a thousand subscribers and 200 likes on this video by the end of next week. But anyways, I really appreciate you watching. I will see you in the next one.